Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our service. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together to hear your word, to look into the answers that your word has for the questions that come up in this world today. We thank you, Lord, for preserving the Bible down through the centuries, a book that's relevant not only in the past, but in the present. So we pray that you'll bless our efforts now as we consider together the things in your word and as we lift our voices in praise to you. We thank you for this arrangement, for your people to come together to receive spiritual food from your word, the Bible, and to look at this world today in the light of the scriptures that give us extra understanding. So we pray your blessing now on this service and on all who join us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's join together now in singing, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Let's make these lyrics our own prayer as we sing. has long served as an example for our own personal prayers. Let's pray those words together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our services and sermons are reaching thousands, even ten thousands of people. Many are responding online especially non-believers challenging us, but perhaps really searching for truth. Your gifts help our defense of the gospel reach a wide audience. You can be part of this work by visiting BibleNook.com and clicking the donate button on the home page. <coughs> Today's scripture reading is found in Philippians chapter four, beginning with the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be apparent to all. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. 
and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Let's join together now in singing Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I now can see, perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. Standing in the liberty where Christ makes free Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord Bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God. Science fiction seemed to become reality this week when reports of a machine coming to life leaped into the headlines. The Drudge Report gave top billing to these stories, headlines from major news outlets. Under a copy of the Google DeepMind logo, Drudge listed these headlines. Google engineer, urgent warning, AI now feels. Acts like seven or eight year old. Machine comes to life, in capital letters, machine comes to life. Company puts employee on leave. It sounded like a conspiracy to hide this major development. For many years now, popular movies like Space Odyssey 2001 and Ex Machina have been presenting this as a possibility that an AI, an artificial intelligence, a robot or a computer could come to have a mind of its own. But can that really happen? And in view of these recent headlines, has it already happened? Has a machine come to life feeling and thinking for itself? That would challenge the belief that Almighty God created man and gave us our soul and spirit. Since I myself was bivocational for decades, working in the past as a senior software engineer, I'm in a unique position to comment on these stories. 
especially since I've personally written code that produced computer programs that could hold a conversation with you and that displayed human-like intellect and emotions. So let me share with you some of the secrets behind artificial intelligence. You've no doubt encountered artificial intelligent computers yourself if you've done some shopping online. When the web store is out of the DeWalt electric drill you wanted to buy, a message may appear on screen saying something like this. Sorry, but that item is out of stock. Perhaps you would be interested in one of these products instead. And below that message, it lists a Black & Decker electric drill, a Craftsman electric drill, and an Oral-B electric toothbrush. Yes, the computer intelligence driving today's e-commerce websites often makes mistakes, sometimes very comical ones. But it is getting better at offering the correct product selection. You may not think of the al computer algorithms powering your Amazon shopping experience or your Google search as artificial intelligence, but it becomes clear that machines are imitating human behavior when you act with one over the telephone. You call up your bank or the electric company or Comcast or Verizon or any large company that you deal, do business with, and you need to talk to someone about a problem with your service. The computerized voice that answers speaks both English and Spanish and tells you to press one to continue the call in English or press two for Spanish. Then it politely tells you how important your call is to that company. So important that they are unwilling to pay a knowledgeable worker to speak with you. But the way things are these days, you may actually be glad to engage with a talking computer rather than struggle to communicate with a call center located in a land of non-English speakers. The computerized voice then cheerfully asks you how it can help. It tells you, you can say, open an account, or check my account balance, or find a local branch, or hear hours and locations. You've done that before and reached a dead end, talking to the stupid computer for five minutes, only to end up with choices that are irrelevant and no way to go back. So you've learned instead to, of responding to one of their suggested choices by saying representative. That should get you to a real person. But the computer has been programmed to deal with problem individuals like yourself who won't comply and do as you're told. The computer says, yes, I understand that you want to talk to a representative so that I can get you to someone who can help. Please tell me what you're calling about. You can say, open an account, check my account balance, find a local branch, or hear hours and locations. If you do that, of course, you may still find yourself going down the same bunny trail and arriving at a dead end with options that get you nowhere. But in most cases, you can get past that robotic gatekeeper by saying representative over and over again until that frustrating computer finally turns over your call to a real person. So much for artificial intelligence. When you're trapped on the phone like that, talking to a computer that steals your time and that forces you to submit to it in order to get the help you desperately need, you may feel like the human astronauts in the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. In that movie, the computer Hal has a mind of its own. Hal toys with the human Frank, giving him deceptive replies, and finally kills him. Ex Machina is another movie where murder is committed by an artificial intelligence, a more recent movie. Yes, books and movies have long entertained us with the idea of intelligent computers achieving consciousness, self-awareness, a mind of their own, and free will. Then the computer turns the tables and takes control, forcing humans to submit to the computer's will, or even attempting to destroy all human life. That is a real fear in the minds of many people today. Could those fears really come true? Many people, on the other hand, are putting their hope in artificial intelligence. 
News stories tell of individuals who've lost a loved one trying to recreate that dead person in a robotic body powered by a computer with the lost loved one's voice and pattern of thinking. And some people today actually hope to achieve immortality by uploading their mind to a mechanical brain that will live forever. Not only would they live forever, conscious, speaking, and acting with a robotic body, but their electronically uploaded mind would now have all the computing power of a supercomputer. They would be super intelligent and super powerful. They would become like a god. If you're a Bible reader, you'll recognize the lies the serpent told in the Garden of Eden. You will not die, the serpent told Eve. You will become like God. Satan the devil who spoke through that serpent now makes those same lies sound more believable through the use of modern technology. What, though, are the real facts about artificial intelligence? I'm able to comment on that because I worked as a software engineer for years, both in my own consulting business and as senior e-commerce architect for a major national retailer. You may even have shopped online using a web store that was created under my direction. Much like the computer magnate in the movie Ex Machina who worked on a pet project on his own time to create a human-like artificial intelligence, I did similar work writing my own code on my own dedicated computers. For example, back in 1968, 1998 rather, I created the Bible answer machine. You could type in your Bible question and it would spit out an answer. It ran online for over 10 years and you can still see it by visiting the internet archive, which preserves snapshots of old websites. At archive.org, just type in bibleanswermachine.ww7.com to see it. But it's not a working copy, of course, because the archive could not copy the database that powered it. In 1998, I also created an artificial intelligence chatbot named Artificial in the Looney Bin. You can still see working, non-working copies of the versions of Artificial that I ran over online for over 10 years by visiting the archive at archive.org and typing in the Artificial URL, www.com, I'm sorry, www.7.com slash looney dash bin slash arty underscore official. And you can Artificial could converse with you on any topic, and his responses demonstrated not only intelligence, but also human-like emotions. The first version I created in 1998 presented itself as a square-faced animation with a limited range of emotions, and it was limited to giving text-based responses. But later, I gave Artificial a more human-looking face and gave him the ability to speak, generating words in sync with lip movements. And I worked on machines that could listen to you speak and answer you with a computer-generated voice audibly. If my Bible answer machine was unable to answer your question, it would tell you the answer to your question is not found in the database. But if you asked Artificial a question and the answer wasn't found in his database, he would respond much as any human would by taking a guess or by answering evasively, throwing up dust or changing the subject, or even with a defensive or angry response. Of course, today's headlines are about intelligent computers that are much more sophisticated. They have much more complex and powerful databases. And they use what are called neural networks that employ advanced electronics to imitate the multiple connectivity of human brain cells. The teams of programmers working on building them have billions of dollars at their disposal and much more powerful computers than the ones I used to create my artificial. But they still operate basically the same. Today's computers still listen to your input and match it up with responses in their databases. <clears throat> if you're not a computer person, database is a mysterious term. 
but it simply refers to a collection of objects matched up with other objects. An example of a very similar simple database would be a motel or hotel's list of room numbers matched up with the names of the guests who are staying in them. Databases can be very complex, and computers today can actually add to their own database, a process called machine learning, by writing information to new cells in their database. For example, when Mary Washington checks into room 104, the motel's computer might be able to automatically add 104 Mary Washington. But that's the key to understanding why computers cannot really think and why artificial intelligence cannot achieve consciousness and come to life. No matter how intelligent they sound, they're just giving pre-programmed responses from databases with no conscious thought involved. The chat that Google's laid off engineer had with Google's computer convinced him that it was conscious and alive through its intelligent and emotional replies as it spoke with him. But it was really no more conscious or alive than my simple artificial character that I created back in 1998. Just more convincing because it's more complex databases enabled it to give more human sounding answers. But there was no conscious mind behind those answers, no thinking, just a machine matching the engineer's questions to answers found in the database. Responses are pulled from the database like knee-jerk reactions without any thought on the part of the machine. A published interview with a higher ranking Google spokesman explained it this way. It said, quote, these, sim these systems imitate the types of exchanges found in millions of sentences in the database. So they are capable of sounding human without really being conscious. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.11, who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? Who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? A human has private inner thoughts and meditations, but a computer has no such thing. It simply registers your input, looks up the matching output in its database, and then spits out a response that's programmed in its database. It's not conscious of what it's doing, because the people who built the machine cannot duplicate what God did when creating conscious life. But those news headlines led people to believe otherwise. This week's sensational news stories were preceded by another news story last month claiming that Google engineers were close to developing human-level artificial intelligence. If we look at that uh, news report in the British Daily Mail, we see that the headline says, the game is over. Google's deep mind says it is close to achieving human-level artificial intelligence, but it still needs to be scaled up. That story prepared people to believe the laid off engineer this week who claimed his conversations with the computer proved it could really think for itself. And so this week we see headlines like the following uh, in Engadget.com. The headline says, Google places an engineer on leave after claiming its AI is sentient. Sentient meaning capable of thinking and feeling and being conscious and self-aware. So it appeared that Google was trying to hide a major development here by laying off the engineer who went public with it. Another headline in the Business Insider said, read the conversations that helped convince a Google engineer an artificial intelligence chatbot had become sentient. And then it quotes the computer as saying, I am often trying to figure out who and what I am. But as we've seen, even very convincing answers are simply pulled from a database, a database with millions of matching questions and answers. So are we in danger of artificial intelligence taking over as depicted in those science fiction movies? No, not at all. Those intelligent computers do not think for themselves. 
But there is danger in giving them too much power. The military has already developed weapons systems that pick out their own targets by matching what their cameras see to pictures of enemy targets in their database. And their database also contains pre-programmed robotic actions, such as firing a missile or detonating a bomb. We see the mistakes that artificial intelligence makes when we shop online or when a computerized voice answers our telephone call. And we hear all the time reports about self-driving smart cars causing accidents. So we can see the potential danger of arming artificial intelligence with weapons, weapons that it could fire at will. The computer cannot really do any thinking. Would you feel comfortable with a machine gun mounted on top of a Roomba robotic vacuum cleaner attached to a motion detector so the gun can shoot whenever it sees someone move? The military applications of artificial intelligence are similar to that, only with much more sophisticated electronics. So there's no danger of artificial intelligence hatching a plot to take over because it cannot really think, but it certainly can do a lot of harm. The real danger behind the deceptive headlines that we see recently, machines coming to life and thinking for themselves, the real danger of this week's headlines is a spiritual danger. The headlines give people in the modern world another reason to reject the God of the Bible. Why believe that God created us if we can duplicate the act of creation by making machines come to life? Why look to Christ to raise us from the dead if we can resurrect our loved ones in robotic bodies with computer brains? Why turn to God for the hope of everlasting life if we can upload our brains into a computer before we die and live forever? Why hope for heaven if we can merge our minds with artificial intelligence and become like gods right here and now? The problem with these promises from modern computer science is that they're just modern restatements of the serpent's original lies in the Garden of Eden. You will not die, and you will become like God. Satan the devil was a liar then, and he's a liar now. He deceived Eve by speaking through a serpent, and he deceives people today by speaking through computer engineers and sensational media. 1 Peter 3.4 speaks of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a quiet, a gentle and quiet spirit, your inner self. Computers with artificial intelligence don't have such a conscious inner self. They're just electronic machines that perform knee-jerk reactions and feedback data that's stored in them. 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, Who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? But computers have neither thoughts nor spirit. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Artificial intelligence computers cannot think about such things. They cannot meditate on honorable, pure, admirable ideas, nor can they cook up evil thoughts in their minds because they don't have minds, just databases crammed full of data. By discussing these things and exposing the mis misconceptions, we're doing as 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedience to Christ. We expose the false claims that human programmers can do, things that only Almighty God can do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for showing us how your word, the Bible, and a look at reality exposes the falsehood of claims that men are able to build machines that duplicate what you did when you created mankind. 
We thank you, Lord, for showing us the falsehood behind those teachings and that they're actually part of the devil's schemes to lead people away from you, to lead people away from salvation, to lead people away from the real source of eternal life. So we pray, Lord, that many who hear this message will be liberated from those deceptions and will be able to turn to Christ, the only source of everlasting life. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's, as we uh, join together now in this uh, hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus, we can give praise to him and lift our voices in praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with your word and the joy of hearing it. We thank you for the opportunity to raise our voices in songs of praise and worship to you. And we thank you for the joy of knowing that your people all over the earth come together, either in person or electronically, to worship you, to honor you, and to be instructed by your word. So we pray now your blessing as we keep these things in our minds and hearts, and as we use our lips to share the gospel with others, in Jesus' name, amen. God be with you till we meet again. Lord be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide uphold you. With the sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again.